Hi everyone, it's Lori from Equestrian Urban Farms. It's nice to be back doing a video with everybody again um, on this nice fall day. A few minutes ago it was just flurrying outside. Anyway, what I wanted to do for you today was two things with uh, one type of ingredient. Um, a few weeks ago, I guess maybe four weeks ago, I have been buying um, squashes from the farm at the question they're done now but boy they had some great produce this summer and I know we'll all miss the market but every week I'd go down when they had them um, out on the table I would get some butternut squash and some acorn squash so I had them all in my cold storage room and just letting them ripen and I was saving them all so that I could do this video with you guys um, we're going to make two things one is that we're going to make a um, harvest soup and we've had that many times at our community dinner on Thursdays and I have to tell you I miss seeing all of you on Thursday nights we can feed dinner miss you all from the bottom of my heart I got a chance to see some of you over the course of the summer at the market some of you I haven't saw but a big shout out to everybody because I, I really miss our chats and our time together after dinner and seeing you and you know doing stuff together in the kitchen Anyway, I hope everyone's well. Um, so what we're doing is the um, harvest soup. So there will be lots of pictures listed when I do this video to show you kind of step-by-step -step instructions because I couldn't do it all with you during one video. So what I did was I filled my sink up with cold water and I put in my, um, I guess I had maybe six acorn squash, four um, butternut squash and gave them all a really, really super good wash in warm water um you know they're a low growing plant to the ground you never know what's going to be in the field so you want to give those really really good scrub and um did those and two i had three trays all together as you see in the pictures did a whole bag of carrots and uh what else went in here i had a little bit of celery and my garlics so had, first step was to get everything washed. Just got to pull up my garlics, guys. Everything was to get everything washed and then started to get all of my squashes, tops and bottoms cut up, cut them in half, got the seeds and the pulp out really, really well and laid everything on cookie sheets well, well lined with parchment paper. So I just kept filling up bowls until all of the vegetables were prepared. While I was doing that, I had garlic from the farm and I just put that on a small pan again lined with parchment drizzled it with oil and just let that slowly bake in the oven at uh, 225 degrees and uh, just wanted to do that ahead of time so once everything was prepared and cut up I had some yams in there too sorry I had about four yams and the yams once they were peeled I cut those in about a one and a half inch circular disc. I just went down the, the yam and cut those up. So in my big bowl, I had put in about one cup of my virgin olive oil and lots of seasoning because I really want to season that oil. So I used some vegetable seasoning. I used whatever I had. We're kind of back to that. Use whatever you have. Try not to go out if you don't have to. I used some Cuban and mint, a whole bunch of fresh rosemary that I had in the freezer that was from the garden, and some thyme, and I'm going to add the bay leaves after, and my magic herb stuff. You saw me use this many times, and I did a video on this for you. My three herb mixed, and I used uh, two teaspoons of that. So I mixed all of those herbs and spices into the oil and then started to coat, put all the vegetables in this huge, huge bowl and just started to coat them all. Wanted to make sure they were all coated, also added some salt and pepper and started to line my cookie sheets that I said were lined well with parchment. And all three trays went into the oven at 425. Cut the vegetables up, the squashes into about three inch pieces. You don't want to make them too small. I have saw that done before and you just end up with um, burnt vegetables. So I've got some nice pictures again. You'll see that and they cooked. They were done in about 30 minutes, but you want to keep everything uniform so it starts and finishes and it's done at the same time roasting it. 
So you want to make sure that oil is nicely seasoned because you're doing this roasted vegetable. Let them cool once they came out. And um, like I said, we're making two things. One is the pot of soup and the other one is, hold on, I just have to go get it for you, is I wanted to make a vegetable, a pureed vegetable. So we'll, we'll show you that in a second. So this is the soup we're gonna start with. So this is all of my uh, scraped out squashes, carrots, the yams, okay? There is little pieces that were a little bit toasty, but they're gonna be pureed up. And to that, just gotta wash my hands for a second. I probably did a little bit more garlic than I need. So I'm going to add I think I'll start with four cloves. I wish you had smell of vision because these just smell garlicky, a little bit nutty. They just smell divine. And I'll taste it on halfway through. If I need more, I'll add more. But if not, I'm going to freeze the rest and just see what happens with them. Just gonna give these a small cut up. They're nice and tender. And then the soup's gonna be, get finished being pureed anyway. They just smell beautiful. They're so fragrant when you do them that way. And the skins come off so easily. So I'm just going to put them in because like I said, it's gonna all be pureed up at the end. So I've added those four to start. If I think it can handle a couple more, I'll add those in. Now I don't, didn't have any of my organic stock I haven't been able to get it on sale. So now that the garlic's in, we can go ahead and add liquid. If you have any vegetable stock at home that you've cooked, you, you know, that you've frozen from cooked carrots, cooked broccoli, cooked cabbage, and you've frozen that water that you cooked it in, you could certainly add this to the soup. It would be absolutely wonderful. Many times I did videos with you and I'm going to have my videographer go in there and uh, show you the recipe for homemade vegetable stock. And that way it gives you time to go get your phone and just take a picture of that sheet. That's a homemade vegetable stock that I often have in the freezer that I add to a soup like this. Right now I didn't have any. So I'm going to, again, just use what I have. I'm certainly not opposed to the Campbell's. This one brand that I find is not too salty. I do like to use my organic when I can get my hands on it, but they just haven't had it. I haven't been able to find it. We're kind of back to shopping for what we can, finding out, you know, when we can. Sometimes things aren't always readily available when we get out to the stores now. So I'm just gonna add the one. So I've got all of my roasted vegetables in here, plus one container of stock. And I'm going to add one of my organic bay leaves. I always count my bay leaves when I put them in. Just make sure that way I know how many I have to pull out. Because I certainly want to make sure I pull that out before I do any pureeing of the soup. I also have my favorite. And again, I'm not promoting anything. But I just love these organic Go Bio Cubes. And I get them in chicken and vegetable. I've even bought the mushroom ones. And I've taken one of those cubes and just dissolved it in roughly half a cup of water. It just helps add a little bit more flavor, but I like to dissolve it before it goes in. So I'm just gonna put this on the stove the way it is and let it come up to a boil. You never wanna boil soup once it's past the initial boil. And then just let it simmer 
giving it the occasional stir for about half an hour. Everything in here is cooked. And then, then I'm going to judge my seasoning, see if, um, you know, it needs any extra salt or pepper. And then I will take out that bay leaf and I will start to puree it. At that point, you could add, if you wanted, you could add a cream to this soup to make it a, you know, a cream harvest soup. I will probably add three to four tablespoons of sour cream just to kind of give it some silky richness. Um, as you folks know, I'm not a kitchen gadget person, but there are some things that are really handy to have, especially this time of year. And one of them, call them a boat motor, but it's your, your blender, your hand blender. So if you can maybe find yourself one of these at um, a thrift store or um, Bible mission store, if you see one, or even if they're on sale, or you want to put on a Christmas wish list, they're really handy to have. Um, wouldn't be without it, I use it a lot. So I'll put this on the stove, and I'll start that in a second, and then I'll show you pictures of the finished product. So like I said, the other thing I had done with those vegetables was I wanted to make a vegetable dish with it. So I did that this morning. Same vegetables, your two types of squash, your yams, your carrots, and this one didn't have any garlic, and heated it up very gently when it came off, and added just maybe one teaspoon of butter. You could add whatever you use in your house, vegan margin, anything that you use. And then I added one tablespoon of brown sugar and half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And believe it or not, um, this is going to be a Christmas vegetable that I've already prepared. Um, Christmas is a busy time enough and I really don't want to be doing the whole squash and the yam peeling and all that stuff on Christmas Day. We buy frozen vegetables all the time, so why not have your own? So this container just fit perfectly. This holds three cups. I'll probably put just a slight piece of parchment paper over the top once it's totally chilled in the fridge and label it. And it's roughly four weeks till Christmas. And this will be just lovely with our ham and potatoes or whatever else we're having yet. I'm not quite sure, but it tastes really yummy. I wish you guys could taste it. So that's just a really nice uh, squash and yam recipe that you could put together. Like I said, I just divided some from the, the trays that I was doing. So um, the soup, like I said, it'll boil for about um, 30 minutes and then I'll judge and see if I've got to add another vegetable broth to it. And then once it's at the thickness, you don't want it too, too thick, but it makes a beautiful supper this time of year with uh, some nice bread and a Caesar salad or a tall salad. I let it cool down and then I can just portion it into appropriate containers, let it cool really well, label it, and then uh, pop it into the freezer. And it makes a great meal just to be able to pull it out when you're busy and have a nice homemade soup. So I hope again you've enjoyed um, this video. One thing I did want to mention, I know the farm is having a fermentation and preserve sale. I think it's in a couple of weeks. So if I would have to check um, with the farm if they have any of these three herb mixtures um, frozen left at the farm. But if they do, try and pick one up during that sale. You won't be disappointed. You'll uh, really enjoy using them for your homemade soup and putting them on your roasted vegetables. So again, thanks everyone for joining me. Stay safe and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.